Hello and welcome or welcome back to the 100 Acre Wool Knitting Podcast. My name is Bella and I'm coming to you from Los Angeles, California. I was in a bit of a different recording situation last week, but I am back in California now in my home and we're back to our normal setup now. <laughs> so today's episode is going to be a little bit different than my normal podcasts where I'm updating you on my works in progress because it is now the new year, it is now 2022, and this is the time of year where I'm planning all of the big projects that I want to get done for the year, and that includes knitting. So I have put together a Make 9. Last year I had also planned a Make 9, but I was a bit in over my head with that one. I had planned to make 9 garments, and each of the garments were also very involved. They would have taken me a long time. I did start on a few of them and I actually did make more things than I had planned in my Make 9. Like I made different projects than I was expecting. You know, that, that happens. Things come with all, things, new things come along and you just get sucked in and you want to make those. So I didn't really stick to my Make 9 last year, but this year I'm trying to be a lot more realistic with my goals and I'm really going to try to make these and I also really want to make all of these. So yes, that's kind of going to be the plan for this video is to talk about the things that I'm planning on making and also some yarn that I'm planning to use with those projects. Um, if you are a follower of this podcast, then you may have seen my last video where I was at my parents' property in Virginia. I was over there for the holidays this year, and I was visit visiting with them. And being in Virginia, there are a lot of yarn stores, so I definitely made it a point to visit some of the yarn stores out there and got a little carried away at the yarn stores, as one does, and picked up some beautiful things. So those are, or a lot of the yarns that I picked up there are also, um, I also picked them up with these projects in mind that I'm going to talk to you about today. So it's kind of going to be what I'm making for 2022 along with the yarns that I'm planning on making those things with. So hopefully you enjoy that and let's get started. I have put a picture here of my Make 9 chart. So these are the patterns we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be starting uh, with the top left and then we're going to work across and down. So the first one is the Shifty Sweater by Andrea Mowry. I've been wanting to make this sweater for quite a while. I really love Andrea Mowry's, um, I think it's like a slip stitch technique that she does for Shifty. And then also the Night Shift, which I'm also going to be making this year, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But yes, the Shifty has been on my make list for a very long time. And in Virginia, when I was in the yarn stores, they had Spin Cycle Yarns, which Spin Cycle is the um, brand of yarn that Andrea Mowry used to create the original version of this sweater. And honestly, for a while, I was thinking maybe I would just wait until I have my own hand spun to make it, um, since I have seen a lot of knitters doing that, and I thought it would be really cool to have your own you know, hand spun uh, sweater, <laughs> hand spun knitted sweater. Um, I haven't gotten into hand spinning at all yet, but I definitely want to. I know I will someday. <laughs> so I thought it would just be, I thought that's what I was going to do with the sweater. But um, yeah, being in the yarn stores and seeing all of the spin cycle in person, it's just so needless to say, I did end up picking up some yarns of spin cycle to create this sweater. I am going to be doing a different kind of a different colorway choice than the original is. I'm using the same base color but the kind of contrast colors are going to be different. So first is the base colors. It's going to be these four of Grumpy Birds. These, This is the colorway of Grumpy Birds. I'm going to be using, there's a lot of like really cool yellows and grays in this. I think it's a very beautiful colorway. Just a really nice base for everything else to play on top of it. So then for my contrast colors, I'm actually not fully decided on what I want, what I want to do with these. Um, the pattern only calls for three contrast color skeins, uh, one color of three colors. I have four here and one of them being mohair. So <laughs> mohair is not called for in the pattern, but um, I had originally, actually I originally bought most of this yarn this past summer, um, but when I went back 
this time I got this gain as well because I am just kind of not completely decided on what I'm going to do. I was originally planning these with the main color, um, but then now I may add this one in. Um, but this color is called Salty Dog, and this one is Shades of Earth. This one was pretty much my favorite out of this whole bunch. It's really, really cool, all of the colors in that one. And then also um, the other spin cycle is Nostalgia. I really love this one as well. It's a lot of magenta pinky tones, which is totally up my alley. <laughs> and then, yeah, this one is the mohair. And I just, I picked it up because it, I thought it really went well with these two. Um, the Nostalgia and the Shades of Earth. I think it really picks up on all the tones in those. So, I don't know, I may use mohair, or I may use Salty Dog, or I may use all four. Who knows? Anyways, I rambled on enough about this yarn. So, yes, this is going to be for a shifty and I'm very excited to get started on that. Um, this is gonna be my first, also my first spin cycle project, my first time using spin cycle, so yay, <laughs> excited for that. So the next project I'm gonna be making are the Alikja slippers. I am probably butchering that name, and they are by Becky Swarnson. If you see me looking down, I'm looking down at my notes so that I make sure I get, or hopefully get everything right. I'm probably gonna butcher some names, but I am sorry, <laughs> I'm trying my best. But um, these slippers I found in my 52 Weeks of Socks book by Lina. And if you are not aware of this book, you, you probably are aware of it if you are a knitter. <laughs> um, it's pretty much like a knitting Bible at this point for socks, I think. I hear everyone talking about it all of the time. But anyways, um, I received that book last year for Christmas and I really wanted to knit pretty much everything from it. And this year I really want to get back to that because there's a, quite a few projects in there that I just think are gorgeous. And these slippers are one of them. I just think they would be so perfect for lounging around the house. And I always want to wear some sort of socks or slippers on my feet. So, And for that project I don't have specific yarn in mind yet to use. I have some Jameson and Smith wool in my stash which I think might work as the main color but I'm not quite sure yet. I also have this really interesting um, kind of unique skein of silk uh, yarn. It's 100% silk and it's also kind of tweedy. It's got some like red and, and gold tweed bits in it and it's all 100% silk. So I may use this as like one of the contrast colors. I think it, it's a really lovely rich color. So who knows, we'll see with that one, but I think it'll be a great little project to have on the needles. It looks like it'll be a quick knit, but it'll definitely get a lot of wear. So then the next project on my list is the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit. And I'm not actually planning on knitting this exact sweater. I am going to be knitting something that's very similar to it, that's why I put it on the list, is I'm gonna be kind of, I will purchase the pattern and be using that as a template but I'm gonna have to change it up a little bit. So let me get the yarn for that. <laughs> you may have seen this in the thumbnail. This is a lot of yarn. <laughs> so um, my mom, of course, she knows I'm a knitter and as one does, she asks me to knit her things. And of course I oblige, I'm happy to. I, I will always knit her things if she wants me to. And she had also visited the yarn stores with me when we were in Virginia. Um, and she had seen some yarns that she just fell in love with and wanted me to make her something special with them. So we had gone to, um, the yarn store I think is called Looped, Looped in DC. We were in Northern Virginia, so very close to DC. And yes, she found the La Bienna May yarns and she just fell in love. <laughs> so let me put this down. Oh my goodness. It's heavy. All right. So... <laughs> We went to the La Bienname section of that store and of Luton in DC, and she found these yarns that she absolutely fell in love with. So these are two different bases. We have her um, La Bienname, the Kumo base, which is a Surrey alpaca. Oh my gosh, this is my first time ever using or ever feeling Surrey alpaca in person before, and it is so soft. I think it's. It's probably the softest um, base, probably the softest fiber that I've ever felt. It is very similar in behavior and look, I feel, to mohair, 
but I think sometimes mohair, I've noticed this, I think sometimes mohair can give you a little bit of an itch factor, especially when you're wearing it. Like you can't really tell when you're feeling the yarn, maybe, um, but especially when you're wearing it, it can sometimes feel a teensy bit itchy, itchy, but I don't think that'll happen with this Surrey Alpaca. It's just lovely. It's that's all I can say. It's lovely. <laughs> um, so she got some of those, and then she also got their Merino Singles. Um, and then the colorways for these, this is Anemone. These ones, uh, the Merino Singles is Anemone, and this one is Lavande, I think, is the colorway for these. So a really cool, speckly. It kind of reminds me of, um, like, Water Lilies, if you know that painting those kind of colors, the purples and blues and pinks and greens, those kind of things. So, back to the pattern that we're talking about. So my mom would really like me to knit her a cardigan out of these yarns and make it similar to the champagne cardigan. So I'm gonna be holding these double throughout. She really likes how it looks. Um, we did a little sample swatch, or I did a little sample swatch, and she really likes how it looks with these held together. And she also wants me to use quite a loose gauge, so I'm going to be using a US 10 needle. And yes, needless to say, it's going to be very different from the petite knit cardigan. I'm going to have to change some of the math, and it's going to be a different yarn weight because I'm holding two things double. It's going to be a little bit thicker of a yarn, and then the change of needle size. So anyways, I'm going to use the champagne cardigan as a template and then kind of go off of that but it'll probably be a similar sort of a design. So that'll probably be really beautiful for her. I hope she'll love it. And moving right along, the next project that I want to make are the Hesta Slippers by Mika John. And this is also another pattern from the 52 Weeks of Socks book. Another pair of slippers though, because I just am a sucker for soft and bouncy footwear. Um, I would rather wear a pair of slippers than a pair of socks. So that's the plan. And again, for this one, I don't have specific yarn picked out yet. I do have some things in my stash that I probably will whip something together so I don't have to buy more yarn. That's another thing. I have bought a lot of new yarn for this year for my makes, but I'm also going to try to do as much stash busting as possible because I actually have kind of built up quite a bit of a stash now and I don't want it to languish there forever, so I'm going to try to use it for some little projects. So I do have a skein of worsted weight yarn that was left over from another project that I did that I might use. Um, but we'll, I don't know, we'll see. That's kind of open-ended for that one. And next is Amelia Putri's Lyric Socks, again from the 52 Weeks of Socks book. I just think these are so beautiful and so elegant. Love the design of these. And I actually have a yarn in my stash. I forgot to bring it out, but I have a yarn in my stash. I'll probably put a picture here of it so you can kind of tell what I'm talking about, but um, it has kind of similar tones to the original. More colors in it, but kind of similar tones. So I'm hoping it's not too variegated um, since the pattern is kind of subtle. Maybe I should use a more flat color. Not flat, but um, not variegated. So we'll see with that one, but um, I definitely want to make that design. I just think they're so beautiful. And the next pattern on my list is, of course, the Night Shift Shawl by Andrea Mowry. This is, again, using the same kind of stitch pattern as her Shifty Shawl. So, again, with Spin Cycle Yarns. And this is another one that I've really been wanting to make pretty much since it came out a couple years ago. It's just been on my to-do list, on my queue in Ravelry <laughs> that I want to make it. And again, it was one of those things that I thought I was going to use my own hand spun to make. I thought that would be really beautiful. But, of course, got carried away at the yarn store and just found colors that really stood out to me and I fell in love with. So I had to take them home with me and make this out of them. So they are again in this ginormous basket. So these I also found at Looped DC. Um, they have a really wonderful selection of yarn there. They had some things that I was trying to find other places but wasn't able to, so that was really great. Um, but yes, so back to the Night Shift Shawl. Um, when I did decide that I was going to use Spin Cycle for these, I was kind of doing a lot of scouring for colorways I would want to use. Since I didn't want to do exactly the same as the original, I wanted to use um, 
some different colors than that, but I couldn't find ones that um, I fell in love with. And I also, I have a thing about Spin Cycle that I'm too scared to order it online because it, it th with the nature of Spin Cycle, you don't quite know what it's going to look like um, until you get it in your hands. Even, even with the same colorway and the same lot, um, you can get very different looking skeins of yarn. So <laughs> Spin Cycle is one of those things that I feel I need to pick out in person. And yes, I was in person and these were calling out to me. So they came home with me. <laughs> so Night Shift calls for six of the Dream State base of Spin Cycle, which I think is worsted weight. I believe so. So I have six colorways of that base here. And I will probably put a picture of what I'm planning to do as the fade, um, since it's kind of hard for me to hold all of them up at the same time. But um, the colorways that I'm planning on using is, uh, this one is Rosy Maple, which this one was the one that called out to me very first. This is absolutely me in, <laughs> this is 100% me in a skein, if there could ever be one. It is so beautiful. There's really rich kind of purpley pinky tones and then warmer reds and oranges and yellows, and then even a little bit of black in there. I really love this colorway, and so had to pick that one up. Um, next is, this one is Rusted Rainbow, which I think Rusted Rainbow is used in the original. Um, again, really beautiful warm tones with oranges and yellows in that one. Had to pick that one up. And also, Nostalgia again, <laughs> very similar to, actually the same colorway as what's in what I'm planning to use for the Shifty. Oh, which I forgot to say, the Shifty uses their sport weight yarn, which is called, I'm totally forgetting, but <laughs> anyways. Um, so yes, Nostalgia as well. And then I also got some kind of bluer, greeny tones. So one of those is Overpass. I don't actually think I've ever seen this one before. Um, maybe it's new, maybe it's new to me, anyways. Really cool kind of blue and brown tones in that one. And this one is Deep Bump, kind of green and yellowies. It's kind of a yellow green, um, also some blues in there. This one I also think was used in the original. And finally is Castaway. This one's kind of falling apart. <laughs> the skein is kind of unraveling. But um, this one also has orange and blue tones. So with all of these, I tried to get each of them to connect in tone to at least one other. So you'll, you'll, you'll find that um, a lot of them have similar tones to each other. A lot of them have oranges and pinks and blues, and they all kind of, I felt, blend together well. <laughs> um, since this is going to be a very blendy shawl and pretty much all of the colorways interact with each other at some point in the shawl, the way that she has it set up that you blend it. I wanted them to all go well together. So I'm hoping this will make a beautiful night shift. Um, I was looking also on Ravelry at some other people's um, shawls and all of them are beautiful. It's just, I think it's just a lovely design. It just brings out the best in whatever yarn you're gonna use for it. So that's gonna be really, really fun. I'm very excited about that one. And then the next two projects are actually projects that were in my Make 9 last year and I had started on but I haven't finished yet. So the first one of that is Gita, which is by Linda Marvang. It is a all-over cabled sweater. It's quite a thick yarn that is used. I think I'm using a worsted weight right now. Um, you can see the original is done in a teal, but mine is actually going to be in, or it's actually, it is in a kind of greenish gray tone. And this is some hand dyed yarn from one of my good friends here on YouTube and also Instagram. And that is Alexandra of the November Woods Crafting Podcast and also November Woods Crafting Yarn Co. Um, you can check her out on Instagram. I'll also link her down below. So I'm using her yarn for this and it's a lovely, lovely yarn. I am really enjoying it, but I need to get back to working on it. <laughs> I've had some other things in the works. Anyways, I'm gonna be definitely, um, definitely going to finish this project this year. I'm really loving the fabric so far and the color is beautiful, very natural colors. Also, I forgot to mention, all of her colors are dyed with natural dyes, so obviously it produces natural tones. Um, I really love it. So 
that is going to definitely be happening this year and being finished this year. And then along with that, um, The Yell Cardigan by Marie Wallen. I started on that this year. I'm actually pretty far through it. Um, I pretty much only have the arms left to do, but there is some to do on it. <laughs> so I'm going to be focusing more on that this year and we'll definitely be finishing it this year. And this is where mine is at so far. So the body is almost finished, but I still have quite a bit to do on it as far as the arms go. Um, and then we'll be sticking, and then there's also um, kind of a border button band. I don't know what you want to call it, but yes, I am loving how it's looking and the fabric and everything. It's, I think I'm going to absolutely, no, I know I'm going to love it once it's done, but I do need to finish it. So <laughs> that is definitely on my make nine for this year. And then last but not least is Luna by Natasha Hornby. This is a shawl that's also been on my wanting to make list for a while. And I really want more shawls. Um, this is another shawl I'm wearing right now that I made a couple years ago. Um, but I really don't have that many shawls, to be honest. So that's why this year I'm kind of wanting to put more shawls in the mix. And Luna is definitely one of the ones that I've been wanting to make for a while. So I'm very excited about that one. Um, this pattern uses mosaic knitting, which I've never done before, and it seems really cool and really interesting. I'm always wanting to try and learn new techniques, so that's going to be on my list to do. And I'm not quite sure what yarn I'll be using for that project yet, but we'll see. I think it'll be a very wearable design, so I'm really excited about that one. And so that is all of my Make 9 plans, but you can see I still have a lot of yarn to go over. <laughs> so I was feeling very inspired in the yarn shops and I did end up picking some more yarn. So I bought these yarns with the goal of turning them into original designs. They were very inspiring to me when I saw them in the yarn stores and they just had to come home with me and I'm definitely going to be turning them into something beautiful. Um, not sure when, but they will turn into something. <laughs> so firstly, um, I saw these yarns at, uh, these ones were from Fiberspace in Alexandria, Alexandria, Virginia. Also another really wonderful store up there. If you live in that area or you're going to visit, I definitely highly recommend both Fiberspace and Looped in DC. Um, go check them out. They have great selection and really lovely staff, really great people. So anyways, um, I saw these yarns and just fell in love with them completely. I will probably be doing some sort of a color work idea, color work design with these. Um, these yarns are by Miss Babs, and the colorway is Antique Brass. It's a really interesting, kind of unique colorway, I think. It's coming up on camera slightly different than it is in person. I think it looks more gold on camera, but in person it has a little more of a greenish tone. Um, but I think it's really cool, and I've never seen a colorway quite like this, so I just think it's really interesting and I want to use it. And to go along with that, these colors of Spin Cycle. I just thought they went together so well. Um, they kind of pick up on each other's tones. Um, the Spin Cycle is the colorway Pick Your Poison, and these ones have a lot of greens and grays and purples. So again, <laughs> my kind of tones. So yeah, I think that'll be some sort of a sweater color work situation, but we'll see. I'm very excited about those. And next, the mohair. Oh my goodness. Does anyone love mohair as much as me? Again, I was talking about it kind of being scratchy, but it can't stop us. It's not going to stop us. It's beautiful. So <laughs> these were also from Fiberspace. Um, they have a little section in the store of Fiberspace that's just kind of like a a wall of mohair, if you want to call it. <laughs> like you, It's like you're walking into a, a wall of mohair. Doesn't that sound lovely? Anyways, um, these colors were just totally calling out to me and my mom as well. We just totally fell in love with them. So, had to pick them up. I have no idea what I'm going to turn these into, but it'll definitely be something hopefully beautiful. <laughs> um, so these are mostly by the Periwinkle Sheep. I think that's a hand-dyed yarn company. And then I think one of these is also Miss Babs, yes. So these are the colorways Rose Gold, which totally, oh my gosh, is that not up my alley or what? Um, Rose Gold, really beautiful color. This one is Gold Rush. 
which this one, yeah, it's kind of coming up similar um, on camera as it is in person. It's kind of a greenish, yellowy gold. I don't know how to explain it. It's really cool. Um, a very interesting colorway, I think. And this colorway is called She Dances. How fun is that? Um, this is just a really rich, beautiful, kind of fuchsia, magenta color. Love that one. This one is You Are Loved. Oh, what a cute little color story we're coming up with here with these color names. <laughs> um, yeah, this one, I guess like a royal blue or royal purple, you might want to call it. So a lot of rich tones here. You can see a trend. <laughs> And then this one is the Miss Babs one. This one is Japanese maple. That's cool. So just a lovely purple tone there. So yes, those ones, again, not sure what we're going to make with them, but it's going to be mohair and it's going to be lovely. And then my mom also had another idea for another sweater. <laughs> she wants me to make her another sweater. Um, she also gets carried away with all the beautiful beautiful yarn colors. Along with the other ones that I showed you before, my mom found some of these um, La Bienname Kumo colorways. So this colorway is called Nadia. I just really love the colorway of this one. It's kind of pink and yellow and green and purple. Just really cool colors in that one, I think. Um, I've also gotten this one caked up. I've kind of started swatching already because it's just too much fun to swatch with new yarns. I think so. I love swatching. I know that's kind of a debated topic. Some people love it, some people hate it, but I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is what it looks like caked up. And I think it's so interesting how much a colorway changes from when it's in the skein to when it's caked up, especially if it's variegated. So you can see Nadia and Nadia. So you can see how much of a difference there is when it's caked up. The colors kind of spread out and become more muted, if you want to call it, um, subtle. So I really love this colorway and it's producing a very beautiful swatch, which I'm going to wait to show you guys, but um, yeah, it's very fun to work with. feels lovely to work with actually since it's so soft. It's a dream. And then again with those, um, she wants to use the Merino singles as well. So she picked up um, this colorway as well, which I've also caked up already. And this one I think is... Oh, I'm totally forgetting the colorway, but I'll put it here <laughs> once I find the ball band. Um, it's just such a beautiful baby pink. Just the hint, just the tiniest hint of rose in this. It's almost cream, but yeah, a really lovely colorway in this one. And this is La Bienname Merino Singles. So I also picked up some skeins that I do not have any plans yet for. Um, they, I just thought they were beautiful and wanted to take advantage of the opportunity of being able to see them in person. I don't go to Virginia every day and I don't go to yarn shops every day, so I just felt I should take advantage of the opportunity. So I'm going to have a lot to play with and a lot to create this year. It's going to be really, really great. <laughs> so that's everything that I have to share with you today. I hope you um, learned something new or found a project that you may want to knit. Um, found some inspiration, whatever it may be, and I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you did enjoy, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you're notified next time I post a video. So I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, whatever you may be doing, and happy knitting, of course, <laughs> and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.